This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money and your career and whatever else you want to talk about. I'm George Camel, your host, joined by my colleague and best-selling author, Ken Coleman, host of The Ken Coleman Show. Just came hot off The Ken Coleman Show, didn't you, Ken? That's right, George. I'm two hours in. I'm already warmed up. I'm stretched. You can so, do three more. Are you, yeah, oh, sure. Three more. It's no problem at all. It beats working for a living. That's true. You know what I mean? We get a fun job. Some schlup is digging a ditch right now, and he's going, I need more. I need to listen to the Ken Coleman show. I need to call uh, the Ramsey show today. I, I, I need to get out of this ditch. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you're right, because it could be worse. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Answering questions, coaching people for five hours. I mean, I'm not going to gripe a lot. Nobody wants to hear me gripe about that. No, there's results in that. That's one thing you talk about is being on mission. To helping people win and by the way george today you and i are together so we're talking about money and meaning we're talking about income and impact i love the alliteration you like that i like that you also said colleague because uh last friday we were together on the ramsey show and i said colleague and you're a millennial and you're like uh you hadn't heard the word very much it's a ten dollar word for a guy like me (laughs) i'll tell you that much (laughs) colleague i say work buddy you oh, know, is that what you yeah, said? I don't know. I don't know what I'd say. Yeah. We call them team members around here because uh, we don't really like the word. Employee feels a little stiff. Yeah. Just I don't care what you say. Just don't Co-worker. call me work buddy. Okay. Like, ever. I'll stay away from that. Okay. That's Well, great. it's a free call today. 888 825 Give us a call. Kelly will put you through. Tell her George sent you. Oh. I don't know if that's good enough. But I like maybe, that. Maybe today it is. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Ken, we hosted Friday and yeah, now we here we are again. And yeah. I call that a double blessing. It is a double blessing. Did you have a good weekend? I did. How about yourself? Oh, fantastic. Did Love. you watch the big game? The big games, George. We watch, football is a sport. Football watching is a sport in the Coleman house. Uh, we, the amount of – do you know what the NFL red zone is, George? I, I heard about it. You've heard about it. <laughs> it sounds real hot, red zone. It, well, it's a way of life in the Coleman household. And uh, we only get up to go to the restroom or get more food and beverage. And we're watching football for several hours. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's an American tradition. And so is the Ramsey Show. It is 30 years well. in, we're doing this, and yeah. I'm excited to take your calls today with my colleague, Ken. We're going to kick it off in Cleveland, Ohio, with Mike. Mike, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can we help? All right. So I have uh, I've had a long history of debt, um, like credit cards and stuff like that. Uh, I have all that paid off. Um, I'm a one-income household now, a single dad. I have my kids 50 Five percent of the time, um, I have a truck payment and I have a uh, a mortgage. My I'm, I'm made, my question is: Should I pay my truck off um, and keep it, and then work on my house, or should I sell it? It's a fairly expensive truck, um, so I guess that's my question. What is this truck worth right now? If you sold it today in this hot market, what do you think you can get for it? It's a. Uh, I think around thirty-four thousand, and I owe uh, twenty-nine and a half. Okay, so you would profit about five grand off of this thing, and you'd get out from under the truck payment, and you'd have five grand to put towards a uh, a car. Correct. And you can uh, buy a car for five question, grand. Absolutely. My other question with that is, um, now aside from my uh, yearly income, I do have options within my job. I'm a police officer. I can um, cash out vacation, holiday, and a little bit of sick time as long as we don't call off sick for the year. Um, I've totaled up everything, and it comes to about twenty-two thousand dollars over the year. Wow! So next year, uh, from basically from this December, we cash out every holiday. So it's kind of like a nice Christmas check. Uh, but from this December until next December, I, I could come up with um, just over $20,000. Um, and I was going to try my best to pay my truck off. Uh, 
and not have a car payment starting January 1st, 2023. Hey, Mike, let me ask you a question. Are you, are you pulling uh, like uh, direct? I don't know if they do this in Cleveland, Ohio, in, 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 in Nashville, Tennessee. If you go driving around on a Sunday morning around 11 o'clock in between 9 and 11, you got police officers out there directing traffic coming in and out of churches, getting a lot of overtime, high school football games. Are you maxing out your mm-hmm. overtime possibilities as a police officer? So I do, uh, when, when it, it's uh, kind of first come, first serve when you sign up for it, I do work as much as possible. I do have a, another part-time job. I work at a hospital um, as uh, as with as a uh, police officer with my department, but I work alongside the security there, so that's yeah. an extra side job. So, I, I, um, are, so you I figuring that, are you figuring that into this other equation you just gave us? No, I'm not figuring any overtime, and also that is not counting – um, the monthly payments throughout the year. That is just extra money that I can cash out uh, some now and then obviously some next December when it comes to, to that time again. Yeah, so what Ken is getting so at is, is could you keep the truck and pay this thing off pretty quickly? And it sounds like you could. There's nothing wrong with keeping this, but based on the fact that you are willing to get rid of it so quickly, which is rare for a truck owner, it tells me you're not in love with this truck and you'd rather clean up this this debt and just have the mortgage to grapple with. Is that right? Uh, kind of, uh, I actually do love the truck and, there we go. um, I've been, I've had it for about a year and a half now. Uh, the only owner, I take very good care of it. So my, my thought process is if I can do this, if I can pay this off by December 31st of next year of 2022, can I just keep this truck Absolutely. and move forward to my mortgage? Yeah. I think you can do it faster than that. What's your household income without the overtime? Um, is this before or after taxes? Uh, let's say before. All right, before taxes is ninety six thousand. However, I have a I have um, child support that I pay a thousand dollars a month for. So at the beginning, so it's twelve thousand less uh, for that. Okay, so it feels like if you so took my, some my overtime, could pay, you get rid of this thing in under a year? I'm hoping. I know. I, so my goal is a year, but you know. Uh, with all the overtime and uh, extra jobs, I think once I get that thing down to, you know, near closer to zero, that I'm just going to work really hard. <laughs> once you see the <laughs> light at the end of the tunnel, the- you're going to go full throttle on this thing, gazelle intense. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, I do have my, uh, I do have about five grand in the bank right now. And that is after I've paid off all my uh, debts and everything. I do have my uh, emergency fund of a thousand dollars. Um, my other question, though, is: I sh- should I um, should I skip uh, baby step four, um, which is saving uh, for the retirement? I believe, right? Yeah. Should you skip it? Now I do have a retire not uh, not, not not skip the baby step. Maybe add t- to it because um, I already have my retirement set up, and I do put um, a little bit more than I uh, have to uh, into it. I want you to continue on. I I don't want you changing up the plan here. Keep doing the 15%. You can keep the truck, but I want this thing gone in under a year with this income and with this overtime. And if you've got cash, throw it at that car. I want you to get rid of this thing ASAP so you can live your life, man. But you're doing great. Appreciate your service as a police officer. More of the Ramsey Show coming up. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to Blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. I'm 
George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. Joined today by Ken Coleman, host of the Ken Coleman Show, and we are taking your calls, 888-825-5225. You know, right now, you're probably focused on all of the fall stuff you've got to buy, the Halloween candy, the jackets and sweaters, it's pumpkin spice latte season, but here's what you should start thinking about right now. Christmas. Christmas seems to sneak up on people every year, and when you let that happen, it's so easy to go crazy on overspending, or worse, put Christmas on a credit card. Don't do this. When you plan ahead with a budget, you'll keep Christmas from getting out of control, and the best way to do that is with our budgeting tool, Every Dollar. You can start your Christmas budget right now by deciding how much you want to save each month and plug that into your every dollar budget so you can pay for Christmas in cash. Then when you start shopping, your every dollar makes it easy for you to keep up with how much you're spending on gifts. And by the way, it's totally free to get started. Or you can upgrade to a Ramsey Plus membership and get premium features like syncing with your bank that allows you to just drag and drop your transactions into your budget and all kinds of custom reports to show you where your money is going. Guys, Christmas is coming. It's not a surprise. And this year, you can actually enjoy the holiday how it should be, stress-free and debt-free. Start budgeting with every dollar by texting the word BUDGET to 33789. That's BUDGET to 33789. Maria is with us in Austin, Texas. Maria, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Maria, are you with us? Yes. Hi. Hey. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. How can we help today? Hi. Okay. So, um, me and my husband were in our thirties. We went through and, um, we got all of our debts paid and we own our own house. Um, we're, we're so blessed with that. Um, so your baby step seven. Yeah. You just breezed right on by that. (laughs) You're in your thirties and you've got a paid for house and no debt. Way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, here's the deal I'm having an issue with. Uh, we're, we're, I think that we're kind of, you know, like thrifty people. We're not like spend beyond our means. We're not um, just, uh, we like to, um, anyway, so here's the deal. We're going to sell our house. It's up for sale. Um, but we're diving into a new mortgage to live closer to town. We have three kids that are, like, involved with stuff, and we travel, like, 20 miles, I mean, yeah, 20 miles to get to town every day, and it's, like, a lot of back and forth, and we're just, like, we just want to be a little closer, so, anyway, I was just having these, like, issues, I'm thinking, are we making the right move, are we... Um, so you're mean, wondering, right is now, it a wise every, financial move to get back into a mortgage? You're in baby step seven. You're saying, hey, this would put us back into baby step six. How much is the house? Oh, yeah. How much is the house you're looking at buying? Well, um, it's 100 and... Sorry, you're breaking up on us, Maria. Try speaking directly into the phone. Sorry, uh, it's 196. 196? The oh. new house? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. The... Um, one hundred and seventy-nine. One seventy. Okay. What's the house you're selling now? What's that one worth? Maria, did we lose you? Oh boy. Oh no. We, we were, just, were we were so we were close getting to the good part. So Ken. close. It doesn't sound like this is a huge cost. We'll see if we can get uh, Maria back. Did I understand her right? That's one hundred seventy-nine thousand. Yeah, let's see if we can get her back, because, I mean, I, I'm on the edge of my seat myself. I know. Uh, it can't look like it was going to come down to a simple math equation, but if they did get to get back into a mortgage, it sounded like it wouldn't be much. Depending on what their current house is. Did, did I hear it correctly that's 179 is the house they want to buy? That's what I heard. And they've got a paid-for house, which, which I imagine has got to be in the ballpark. I would hope. I don't know. They're moving 20 minutes into town. Well, I don't know. I mean, how much could it be? her back, here's what I would tell Maria. Yeah. If you need to take on a ten, twenty thousand dollars mortgage, oh, there we oh, go. Maria, there we go. All right, Maria, are you back with us? Oh my gosh, Maria's back! Come on, Maria, pull through. <laughs> All right, it was a good effort. Okay, okay. Oh, there we go. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, Hi, sorry. <laughs> Let's get to the brass tacks here. What's your current house selling for? Uh, we put it on the market for uh, four ninety seven. Four ninety seven. Yeah. And it's paid for. Yes. And what's this new house worth that you want? Um, well, it's it's one hundred and seventy nine thousand is what we're getting for our our loan. 
Um, oh, for the loan. Okay, see, yeah. there's where we're all, okay. Maria, we were very confused. Well, we I, thought that's what the house Maria, cost was going to be. Maria, what? just so we are all on the same page, how much is the total price? I don't want to know your loan amount. What is the price of the home that you want to buy in town? It, it is, I'm thinking after we get everything set with like what we want to improve on, it's going to be in the like 225 range. I'm further baffled now. Right really, now. so if you sell this house, you're going to have a half million dollars in cash, basically, right? Yeah. So you don't uh, need a mortgage. So where's all that money going? Well, um, it, the house right now, um, it's it's uh, being built. It's a mobile home. Um, okay, time and out. We just thought so, it was a smart thing because it's. You know, we've got more questions than answers here, Ken. All right, Maria. Okay. All right, Maria. I'm yeah. going to take one more shot at this. Okay, Maria. Okay. You are asking us, should you take a mortgage out on a home in town? You're 20 minutes outside of town, and Ooh. your current home is worth basically just under a half a million dollars. The one that you've listed, you've listed it at just under half a million. True or false? True. Okay. If you sell it for that, you already own it free and clear. You're going to have that number minus your commission to your real estate agent. Are you still tracking with me? Yes, I am. Okay. And I'm on board with that. I'm just like, in this market, are we going to sell for, I mean, are we diving into like too fast? No, no, you're not. But you're not diving into anything. This sounds like a really nice, gentle stroll because you're going to buy a house for less than half of what your current house is worth in town, and you're going to pay cash for it. Right. No mortgage. If our house sells here, like. So you have fear the house isn't going to sell. Yes. Well, then you don't. Well, sure. Do. Well, then you don't <laughs> move until you. It's a contingent. So you, with your real estate, you go look. If we sell this house, then we're going to put an offer on this. So you got a really good real estate agent, a Ramsey trusted real estate agent. You got one of those. I oh, we do. I did a good, a good one picked out. So okay. I don't know what you're afraid of. Even if it sells for 50 grand less, you're still going to be able to pay cash for this next house, plus repairs and anything you want to do to yeah, it. Yeah, you don't need a mortgage. Okay. Now, did you say this is a mobile right. home that you're going into or out of? Uh, both. Yeah. So this cur you, See, you're in a mobile like, home worth half a million dollars? Well, uh, we have acreage. Oh, so. there's some land attached to it. Yeah. Okay. So. We're just, yeah, we're going to... Well, are you going into another mobile home? Yes. And what what's the reason behind that? Um, Just because... Uh, I don't know. I guess we just wanted something new and something kind of fast. Well, my I, worry is that I with a mobile know. home, it's going to be a depreciating asset. It's not going to grow in value like a, a single family traditional home would be. So are there traditional homes in, in that area you want to move to that are in the similar price point? Oh, um, no, I, I guess really just and something new and all the house like – Building a house would just be, you know, expensive. Well, you don't need to build one from scratch. I mean, there's plenty of homes people are selling that are single-family homes. Maria, George is being really, really nice. I got to tell you something. It's a bad idea for you to cash out of this current situation and go get another mobile home. It doesn't make sense. It's going to depreciate in value. Go get something a little bit smaller, something that'll take care of the family. Maybe you can fix it up a little bit, pay cash for it, and uh, keep living your life. But to go into a mobile home is a horrible idea. Let yeah. me just say that. Don't do that. You don't need to. Uh, if this is about a better life, well, then let's not make a bad decision on the place we're going to live in. Yeah. It's a depreciating asset. Don't do it. I don't like this. That was a roller coaster, Ken, but we got off the ride safely. Uh, good thing we're wearing our seatbelts on I got that some one. whiplash on that. I'm going to have to get my head together for the next segment. Woo. All right. This is The Ramsey Show.
Still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With healthcare costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, host of the Ken Coleman Show, and from paycheck to purpose, Ken is coming real it's soon. It's a new book, hot on the heels. Hot on the heels. What's going on with this book? Well, it's uh, it's the tool that I wanted to have two years ago, three years ago. But as with anything, George, uh, you gotta you gotta put the time in to make sure it's the right tool. And we're approaching now 5,000 phone calls in the last four years Wow! on the Ken Coleman Show. And so this book, From Paycheck to Purpose, is the full clear path. The subtitle is The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. But what is the book? It's the seven stages um, on how to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do with your life, work where you really love it, you're making the income and the impact. And then how do you figure out what it is? And then how do you actually get there and then be great at it? That's the short version. It's the full journey, super practical, the seven stages. And um, it's for anybody who just wants more out of their work, um, whether it's dream job or not. I, I want to do better. I want to make more money. Ken, how can I make more money? to get out of debt faster. Well, the book will help you. Some of you go, I'm making the money. I just want more meaning. The book will help you. So it is, uh, it's the entire path and uh, it's going to really equip and encourage. It's not a motivational book. It's, it's, it'll inspire you, make you laugh and cry, but it is a very practical book that allow you to stop being miserable on Monday mornings. America needs that with this great resignation. The world needs it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's less than a month away from launch. We're excited yeah. about it. You can, you can get pre-order it right now. RamseySolutions.com is the place to go. You get a lot of pre-order goodies, audiobook, ebook, uh, you name it. So make sure to tune into that and jump on RamseySolutions.com and grab your copy. We're going to go to the phones. We've got Summer in Scottsdale, Arizona. Summer, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Can you go hear me okay? Yes. How you doing? How can we help? Hi. Um, hi, this is exciting. I've never been on the Ramsey show. So, uh, we're, we're just as just excited. Quick, <laughs> uh, I just had a quick question. So um, I have two jobs right now. I have a day job. I'm a loan officer associate for a bank. And then at night, um, I work in bars in um, Old Town Scottsdale. And because um, I can save, I have the ability to save and I do save um, between 40 and 60% of my net income um, every month. Wow. So, but I do have some student loan debt and also I owe a little bit of money on my car. So I was wondering if my student, I plan on paying off my car this month. Um, and that'll just be gone. Um, but I have about $32,000 in student loan debt, but my interest rate on my student loan debt is very, very, very low, about less than 2%. So I was just wondering if you think it would be stupid of me to, put about 25% of my income towards my student loan and then 25% just into like a cash savings account investing or whatever. Well, um, what or I'm hearing is you're wanting to do a few things at once. You're wanting to pay off the debt, yeah. but you're also wanting to stack up some savings. And what I recommend yeah. is focusing on one thing at a time. And that's what we teach in the baby steps. And so we teach mm -hmm. to start with that thousand dollar savings, which it sounds like you have right now. You've got a thousand dollars in cash, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once you have that, what you want to do is list out your debts from smallest to largest, which which it sounds like the car loan is the smallest debt you have right now. Mm -hmm. And that'll be gone this month. And that'll be gone this month, which means we're really focusing on mm -hmm. the student loan. And so what I want you to do mm -hmm. there is stop saving right now. Stop uh, socking away that cash. Do you have more cash other than the $1,000? Oh, yeah. I have about um, $14,000 in cash right now after my car's paid off. There we go. And that's aside from the $1,000 emergency fund, or is that all lumped in there? Um, no, about 13, and so 14 total, so uh, 13 okay. not including the emergency fund. So if I'm you, what I'm doing is taking $13,000 and slapping it on the student loan, getting rid of that, and putting the rest on the car, and that's going to take down that car loan to, what, 20 grand maybe? Under 20 yeah, so grand? the car will be gone. After the car's paid off, I have $13,000 in cash. Fantastic. 
So that means you're down to uh, 19? Mm-hmm. 19,000 yeah. on the car. And with all this extra income, on student loan. no, she on keeps the, saying she keeps saying the car's gone. So after the car, now she now she can slap thirty two thousand in the student loan. Yeah, and you have thirteen you can throw on that. That's huge. Which would bring that down to nineteen uh, total in the student yeah. loan. And with this extra income that you have coming in, which is fantastic that you're you can save all of that instead of putting it in savings. I want you to attack that debt uh, so that you can be debt free. My guess is within a few months at this rate. Is that possible? Yeah. Um, probably about, yeah, I make about 6000 a month usually. So if I put 3000 towards debt, um, that is hard. Yeah, about six months. Yeah. If you've got 19 left, that's, that's about minus. six months. So that's fantastic, Summer. What a game changer that is in your life. I want you to just soak on that for a moment. How would that feel? Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. What's great, Ken, is that yeah. she's you, she's got the discipline down. The work ethic is there. Yeah. Um, you're just trying to do multiple things at once. And what I want is for you to feel the progress of seeing this debt gone so that you free up the payment from the car loan, the payment that you were making towards that student loan. And we don't really, we don't care about interest rate. What we care about is getting the biggest wealth building tool back in your life, which is your income. Momentum, Summer. Do you see what George is telling you? This is gets you the most momentum and it just powers you through this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, you bet. You're impressive. Call thank us you. back when you're debt free. I'd love to hear the, oh, the debt yeah. free scream on this one. Yeah, she's busting it. Two sacrificing, jobs, getting after it. Hear that? She's she's at my day job, and then I'm working the bars down in Old Town Scottsdale, and she's not scared to work. And that that is the number one indicator that you're going to be able to get out yeah, of this debt. No question about that. I love it. All right, we're moving to Antoinette in Orlando, Florida. Antoinette, well, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you guys? Doing great. How can we help? Um, so I, a month before I started the uh, final financial peace university, I consolidated a lot of my debt into my mortgage, um, which I would probably not do now having started this class. Um, so I have a total of about 269,000, um, all in my mortgage, but I have two rental properties and by consolidating, um, both of them are paid off essentially speaking. So my question for you is, is should I sell one of the rental properties that has always been rented and brings in about 1600 a month? and use that to completely become debt-free? Or should I just continue to attack the debt um, and keep those two, well, the investment property? So what debt do you have right now currently outside of your primary residence? Okay, so what I rolled into my mortgage um, was a boat loan, a um, home equity line, which I had used to buy one of the rental properties, and then one of the rental property mortgages. Does that make sense? And you're saying you can get completely debt-free and get out of all of this if you sold one of the rental properties. Correct. Do it. Woo! How would that okay. feel? Does that do you feel it like a feel weight would amazing. be lifted? Do it. it. Would feel amazing. So I get a lot of pushback from family. We have a lot of rental um, gurus in our you know, uh, people. So I'm getting pushback. So they go, Antoinette, it. don't do that. That's not a wise financial move. The re- the rentals no. bringing in income. What are you doing? Yeah, but you're Correct, paying. Exactly. But you're paying off. You're paying off a boat. You're paying off all those other things you put into it. Do you want to yeah. do it? Do you want to do what your family's telling you to do, or do you want to be debt free and then be even richer and more wealthy than they are? I want to be debt free for sure. Yeah, well, you I can do it with so. one one. I just need I needed an extra blessing. <laughs> do it. <laughs> I've right, said well, that's the third guys. time I've said it. Don't make him say it again. Don't, don't make me I spell won't make you it. Say it again. All right, great. <laughs> All oh, right, that's thanks. fantastic. Thanks. No, I, I think here's the thing. Once you have that income back in your life and you're debt-free, you're going to be able to save up and pay cash for your next investment property. Yeah. But it sounds like you've just been you've been on a, on a joy spree, a spending spree, going, I want the boat, let's do the HELOC, let's buy some investment property. Yeah. And based on the people around you, it's, yeah. it looks like, wow, we're crushing it financially. Yeah. But you're feeling the weight of the payments, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate, I hate debt. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> How much do you like that boat, by the way? Uh, if I could convince my husband to sell it, ha. I would have no problem selling it. <laughs> oh, there it is. I'd start working that angle, too. Uh, that, that goes yeah, toward the next I, rental I, property. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. The boat is probably no, not, not bringing you guys income boat. like a rental is. No, it's bringing stress relief. But I think once we're debt-free, that'll also bring a lot of stress relief as well. I'd, yeah, I'd sell the house, pay off all the debt, then go for a boat ride. There we go. I like it. There I like this plan a lot. <laughs> hey, Antoinette, we're rooting for you. Way to go. You're cleaning this mess up, and you're going to have a whole pile of money coming into your life when you get rid of this debt. You're doing the right thing. Don't listen to family members. Listen to George. Listen to me. I'm family now. This is The Ramsey Show.
I'm George Campbell, joined today by Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a free call, 888-825-5225. If you've got a question about money, life, your career, your purpose, your calling, Ken and I are here for you. Even if you just need some confirmation, Ken, a lot of the times people just go, hey, I think I know the answer, Yeah, but... I took three calls today on the Ken Coleman Show. People literally have new, have new opportunities. They're going, do I stay where I am? Do I take this new opportunity? So we'll, we'll talk about those fork in the road questions. Hey, listen, if you're just going, you know what? I know there's more. Uh, I, I feel like I'm a part of the 55% of Americans who are going, I'm actively looking for something else. What should I be looking for? We'll, we'll walk you through it. Um, today, the day um you know because you know you're super nice i'm pretty nice there's nothing to be afraid this is of. the day to call in yeah we're not going to beat you up and if you need some confirmation <laughs> you're going hey my my broke bro- brother-in-law said this i read a headline i was yeah. in a reddit thread yeah. uh call us up and yeah. we can walk you through that yeah. situation with a with a clean yeah. just a clean slate good head on our yeah. shoulders no bias some we just of you help. are going i i want to make more money uh, how do I make some more money in the short term so I can apply it to the baby steps? Let's go. We'll help you with the shovel. It. The shovel is important. 888 825 Angela is in Austin, Texas. Angela, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Doing great. How can we help? Um, well, this is, here it is. Uh, we're, my husband and I, uh, we've been debt free for a number of years. Uh, and... We have a lot of money in the bank right now, and we need to move it because it's 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 approaching to a very big number. Well, how big so, is this number? Uh, it's five hundred plus. Five hundred thousand dollars just sitting in your bank yes. account. Yes. Wow. And uh, he's uh, he works for the government. He's a civilian, and uh, so we have income. I'm retired military. We have income coming there. We wanted to buy a business. This last two years, the COVID hit, so we're reluctant to even invest in anything, even even real estate, because right now we're trying to basically just be mobile, wherever that is. And you don't uh, want to be tied so down. We have it. Correct. Okay. Correct. So you know, we're now we're empty nesters. We wanna. We don't know what we want to do when we grow up. Is basically what it is. But we have this money, and it's it's not really working for us. And I'm just with the information coming down with this administration. I, I'm, I'm I'm nervous. Mm. So where did this money, how did you accumulate this money and how fast? Um, well, we, since he's a civilian, we went, we went overseas. I've been retired for about, about 10 years. So we try to live on my pension from the military as much as we can. So we went overseas and he makes good money. We just socked that away for five years. In addition to when we went overseas, we sold our house. We had a little income from there. And we just really live below our means. Wow. We have one car we're renting. Um, I mean, my car's a 2014. You say you're renting because you're not there yes. for a while? Yes. We're looking, you know, do we move to Tennessee? Do we go with family in Georgia? Do we just buy here? I, I don't know, you yeah. know. So since... Those are the unknowns for us. We want our money to work for us, and we just feel we need to either split it up and put it in different piles. Do you have it in one account right now? Yes. Okay. Well, number one, I, I, you should split that, uh, and here's the reason. Your money is FDIC insured up to $250,000, which means if your bank just went out of business today, uh, you're backed for two fifty, which means you'd lose half exactly. your money. Exactly. So I want you to at least split that up, and you can look into uh, the the rules around can I just put it in two different accounts, or does it need to be with a different bank? Uh, check with your bank as to how that would work. But I want to make sure your money's at least protected right now. And then as far as growing it, I see you're, you're saying, hey, we I know we can do better with this money. I don't want you throwing it into um, into the market, investing it, if you're going to need it anytime soon. And it sounds like you just don't know. There's a lot of unknowns right now. Yes. Correct. Correct. Now, what you could do is invest part of it. You could, you know, work with a smart investor pro and go, "Hey, we're going to put a hundred thousand dollars into some mutual funds in a brokerage account outside of retirement, and just let it grow until we know what we want to do with that." But as okay. far as the money goes, what I would do is put it in a high yield savings account. Right now, you could get uh, about a half a percent to a percent, depending on where you go, uh, and that would at least help grow your money in a safe way where it's still very accessible. Okay, okay. Angela, how soon before you guys are going to be locking in on a decision, some of the decisions that you just shared with us about where we're Um, living primarily? 
Yes. I, I think probably uh, within four months, if, if some things don't work out with a, a new location, then we'll probably just build roots here, buy a home, uh, and then just ride it out till he retires. And, and so that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Well, and so let's just say that the decision was made today, okay? Yeah. That we were either going Tennessee, Georgia, or staying in Texas. What would you do with that money today if that decision was already made? Well, um, then I, I would say we, we would we would take that money probably, don't laugh, but just probably move into a, a mo- mobile home <laughs> on some land and probably fish and live on my retirement. So it just kind of evens out, to be honest with you. I, it's Okay, so you see where I'm going with this? That money, you've already got a plan for it, and what it's going to be is it's going to be cash. You're going to cash, you're going to pay cash for wherever you're going to live and finish out. Yes. Well, then I'd be, you know, I mean, George is right. I'd protect your money uh, in the short term, but you guys need to make a decision. And once you make a decision, that money's going to be spent on paying cash so that you don't owe a dime for anything. And you may have some left over after you buy a house or whatever you're going to do. Correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I just think you're overthinking it. Let's make a decision. Stop spending all this time worrying about how much money you got in the bank, which you shouldn't be worried about anything. Good on you guys. Good job. Let's make a decision on where we want to, to uh, drop anchor, and let's drop anchor and then spend that money on, on that. I, the only thing I would challenge you on is the is the mobile home. It's just, you know, why not buy a nice little home or build a nice little home? Uh, something that's what that's, I say. <laughs> Well, say it a little louder. Seems like Hubs needs to say hear that. A little louder, yeah. Yeah. Is he yes, not wanting to be locked locked into something? I think that's where it is because you know we're getting older, and, and you know what I what I thought retirement was going to be, it's not, and it's okay. I mean, it's a good life. I mean, we're moving around, we're traveling. Um, what did you want like retirement to be? Kind of still that, but I, I don't. I've been we've been mobile so long with the military that uh, I feel like you want to plant roots. I do. I, I really do. I want. I wanted to be able to say this is home and come back to it. You know, I'm originally from California, and uh, and I really love his family, and I would like to move close to them too. But it, it, it just. It, and the good thing about it with his job with this COVID is the teleworking opportunities have really. It doesn't limit us now where we can live, and he can still maintain. You could have his roots job. anywhere and still and still be able to do the job. Yes. Yeah. I, I think yeah. all of a sudden, uh, Angela, this this is no longer a money call. This is a marriage call, and you all need to just sit down and meet in the middle. He likes he likes some freedom to roam. Let's get him some land, pay cash for it, where he can roam and hunt and fish or whatever it is you guys talked about. But you want to drop anchor, and you need to drop anchor. And so you guys need to sit down as a married couple and go. Let's decide. He needs to know yeah. that that you uh, don't feel safe. Uh, emotionally, not knowing where you want to land. You want to land. You want to nest. You want to to uh, settle. Settle the down. Difference. Maybe get a, get a yeah. single family somewhere and get an RV so you can, guys can take off for a there few weeks. There we go. You guys got plenty of money in the bank. <laughs> you got half a million dollars. It's just two of you. Get Build a little house, and it's a nice asset. It's going to appreciate <laughs> land. And, George, it's a great point. Then you guys can drive around, and when you get tired of driving around with each other, then you can go back to the house. and You have he, home. There you yeah. go. H-O-M-E. I love it. Well, Angela, it's a good problem to have. Uh, most of yeah. America is like, I wish I had Angela's problem. Half a million dollars. Don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Isn't so. that true? Good for you, by the way. Look at that. Diligence. You Damn. hear that, Ken? They would just yes. said, you know what? We had we got money and we put it to use. We yeah. saved it up. We didn't go spend it on a bunch of toys. We just saved yeah. it up. And look at them now. What's your position on those tiny homes that you can drag you know, around? I, Are those I think basically fun. mobile homes still? Yeah, they're, they're just hipster mobile homes. So they don't appreciate? No. Ah, okay. No. That's but what I thought. If, if you got tons of money to blow, and you just want to have some fun, make an Airbnb, live there for a while, that's fine. I'm not mad They look at you. cool on those little HGTV They're really cool. Shows. I would fit great in a tiny home, so you, I've, looked, I've looked into it. You would. You'd have plenty of room in a tiny home. Oh, boy. Hey, it's been fun. That puts this hour in the books. Our thanks to Ben Hill, our producer, Kelly Daniel, associate producer, and phone screener, and you, America. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back with you before you know it. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money and your purpose and your career. I'm George Camel, joined today by my colleague, Ken Coleman, host of The Ken Coleman Show, best-selling author and all-around great guy. Ken, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, George. Once again. We've been uh, hanging out a lot lately. We have. We have. Today, I, I felt like it was time to bring a little fall to The Ramsey Show. With, uh, with the vest yeah, the and the team, plaid. Yeah, the teams have a little bit of fun with me uh, today on The Ken Coleman Show. They were giving me a little bit of hard time, you know, like asking me if I was going to cut down some trees later. You clearly haven't chopped a lot of trees in your day. No, if you've ever, uh, if I ever get the privilege to meet you all, if you shake my hand, you'll see that there's not a, not a well whole lot of calluses. Yeah. No, no. Now, see, see, you had to say that. No, I don't moisturize my hands. There's Come nothing on, wrong George. with that. I'd have to hand my man card in. All right, America, call in and let me know if you think moisturizer is okay. I think more men need to be moisturizing. No, no woman wants to touch that crusty, leathery hand. All right. I, I got to tell you, George, there's no way that uh, the majority of Americans think that dudes need to be moisturizing their hands. I might ask Stacey Coleman. I might phone a friend I on this I guarantee you Stacey's going to go, no. I want to feel yeah. like I'm touching Ken's hands. I resign. I resign from this conversation. Okay. Let's do what we do. I guess not best, but pretty good. Uh, <laughs> taking calls from you all. 888 5225 The phone lines are open and they're waiting for you. Katie joins us in Charlotte, North Carolina. Katie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thank you. Absolutely. Can How you can we me? help? Um, yeah, I was calling. So we, um, have, my husband and I are in our mid-30s and we have three little kids. Um, and he is looking into going back to school. Um, and we've been following, um, three of y'all's baby steps. Um, we've started saving for our kids' college. Um, and him going back to school wasn't necessarily always on the horizon, but we have saved up a good bit, um, in hopes to, um, get a rental property. Um, but based on our income, we would qualify for, FAFSA, but because we have money saved up, it's knocking us out of the bracket to be able to qualify for that. Um, so we don't want to do student loans, but we're kind of trying to figure out what is a good way to do that, or should that money go towards school? So what was driving this decision for him to go back to school? Is it a career change? Is it an income thing? Yes, yeah, a career change. What's he moving into? Um, he would like to go back for accounting. What's he doing now? Uh, he works at the police department. So does he need to get a four-year degree or two years? What's What does he actually need? Um, for what he would eventually like to get to, it would definitely be a four-year. Um, so he has a two-year degree at this point, but he he would like a four-year. So he's got to get two more years done? Yes. Or is the plan to do that part-time online while he's working? Yes. Okay. How much is that looking to cost? Um, the, well, he actually was looking to do it full time online. Um, but it looks like it'll be about six to 7,000 a semester. Okay. So round up, we're looking at 28 grand. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you're doing two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So about 24, 25, so 24, 25. Okay. Um, well, who, where's the income coming in when he goes full time as a student online? Um, we will both still be working. So okay. he's working full time um, while going to school full time. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. all right. So he won't have yeah. a life for two years. <laughs> yeah, we'll be busy for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I got it. I got. But it. you've got money set aside. You said because uh, for a rental property that you guys are wanting to get into. Yeah. How yeah, much money is set aside? Do. do what? How much money set aside? Uh, we have about almost forty right now. Oh, great. And uh, are you able to cash flow school without touching the 40? Or would you need to dip into that? Um, we would need to dip into that. Okay. Yeah, I think that the priority here is to have him graduate debt-free. Mm -hmm. I think the rental property right. is a great dream, but it needs to be put on hold uh, until he's finished with this education. Okay. So it's okay to say, hey, I know this was allocated towards the rental property, but really this is going to help us go to school debt-free, and the rental property might be, you know, two years down the road after that. But have you paid for your primary residence? 
Uh, no, we still have uh, about half of it left to pay. Okay. I would encourage you guys to pay off the mortgage first and then get into rental okay. property. And when you do, do it with cash. And I know that's going to slow you down. This might be a, you know, a five, 10 year plan instead of the two year right. plan, but I don't want to see you guys strapped with a mortgage and then the rental property mortgage, and then you can't find a renter and the school situation's in flux. So I want you to finish out the school debt free and focus on paying down that mortgage. Are you guys in baby step six otherwise? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. So you're already investing. You've got the fully funded emergency fund. You're saving for those three kids for their college. Yeah. Yep. How okay. much? How much more, Katie? Are you guys projecting that your husband's going to make once he gets the accounting degree and then he gets into the field? Um, we're hoping it would be, I guess, about like a third more than he's making currently. Okay. Great. All right. Well, you know, I listen. I I. I don't think that you disagree, but I want to make sure that you hear what George is saying, that th doing it the way he said to do it is going to take a little longer, but the impact right. is going to be so much bigger for you guys financially. Down the line. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, guys no, are that, in great that shape. Sense. Do you know how many people call the Ken Coleman show every day that wish they had 40 grand in the bank to be able to cash flow? <laughs> Uh, their husband <laughs> yeah. changing careers and then have some left over. It's a lot. Right. So you guys are in great shape. Be patient. Patience is the wonder drug. I'm just going to tell you. All right. Yeah. We, Not the easiest to be. So it's, it's, right. <laughs> it, it, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Um, I, I'm going to do a little mini sermonette, George. Okay. But I'm the here good for news it. is there'll be no altar call or an offering. Okay. This is kind of, this is kind of, don't sermon. take my money. I'm the only one in here, Ken. These are the kind of sermons people like. In our world, we have glamorized persistence, right? Get up, hustle, 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 hustle. And, and that's very important. But there is no long-term persistence. You will burn out whether the goal is to get debt-free, lose weight, get healthy in your relationships, get a great gig and a job, and, and do work you love. I don't care what the objective is. Persistence, absent of patience, will run out. That was good. Tweet okay? that if you're listening. So here's why. I can get up and go, 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 hustle, 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 hustle. But if I'm not building the muscle and the discipline of waiting and waiting for it to pay off, then I won't stay with it because we humans are creatures of progress, right? We want it now. And it's been exacerbated by the technology and the digital age. And we can get everything right now. Like our kids, I need it now. I need it now. Well, we all have that. But the reality is anything worth getting is a journey and there's a struggle. And you will not stay with it if you don't learn the discipline of patience. I persist. There's tension because I got to wait on it. But learning to wait on it is what keeps me coming back. Gives me the ability to show up the next day and the next day and the next day. Patience. Woo! It's the wonder drug. Right there. Keep learning. Pastor Ken Coleman bringing it today on The Ramsey Show. More of it coming up. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman.
Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined today by my pal Ken Coleman. Listen, we had a big week last week, a huge launch. Borrowed Future documentary out now. If you aren't strapped with student loan payments, the odds are you know someone who is. Millions of people are putting their lives on hold. They can't buy a house or have kids because they are stuck. Or even worse, they're waiting and waiting and waiting for the government to save them with student loan forgiveness. What a joke. 2% rate on that student loan forgiveness from the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Our team produced a brand new documentary, feature full-length film, Borrowed Future, and it is out now. It uncovers the dark side of the student loan industry and exposes how the system is built to work against you. You'll see Dave Ramsey weigh in on the epic failure, otherwise known as the Student Loan Program, along with featured interviews from industry insiders and thought leaders like Seth Godin, Seth Frotman, and Dr. John Deloney. We're coming at this hard, folks. We're taking big swings at the student loan problem with the goal to arm parents and students across the country with the truth. And here's the truth. You don't have to take out loans to get a college education. You can be a student without a student loan. You can graduate debt-free and avoid the predatory student loan industry. Borrowed Future is available to watch now. You can find it on Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video, Google Play, or BorrowedFuture.com. Let me also throw in here that you may not even need the traditional college education. Whoa, Ken, you just blew some people's minds I know, there. I know. Here I go again. And, and, and disclaimer, I'm not anti-college education. However, let me give a two-part question for you parents out there and those of you who are trying to decide, all right, I'm thinking about career pivot. Do I need a new degree to get where I want to go? Two-part question, really simple. Here we go. The first one is, is a degree the only way to get where I want to go? The only way. Second question is, is the degree the best way to get where I want to go? Folks, this is mind-numbingly simple. But if the answer is yes to the only way, lawyer, doctor, okay. If the answer is uh, it is the best way, okay, there's still a way to do it. There's still a way to plan. There's still a way to save. There's still a way to cash flow your way through it. Uh, but this, I, this, this idea that the only way to career success is through a degree um, is the is the byproduct of a marketing message that has been crammed down our throats for going on about 50 years. Um, and, and so be mature enough, mom and dad, to uh, be okay talking to your kid and helping your kid figure out what they want to do. And if a degree isn't the way, the only way, get over it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. By the way, I love that question. When you ask somebody, when was the last time you went to a doctor or some professional services that required a degree? And you say to them, did you, have you asked the person where they got their degree? Like last time you were in the dentist chair, did you go, hey, real quick, before you do the old scrape, uh, I'd like to see your diploma. Like nobody does that. No. It's just art on the wall. Nobody gives a crud where you went to college. Yep. You're the only person that cares. It's a pride thing. Right. Unless you're on the football team, I don't care. I like football, so I'm going to cheer for school. But if, if it's like, I don't care where you went to school. Nobody, unless you're a football player nobody or basketball or a major sport, nobody cares where you went to school. Nobody. We've got to make some sound decisions here based on logic. It's about a ticket. Yeah. Education could be an online certification. You know, uh, could be an apprenticeship. It's it, The education is what do I need to learn to be able to actually do what I want to do. That's the simplicity of it. It doesn't necessarily need to be a degree. So I wanted to put that in there because that's part of what's driving this crisis as well is the cultural pressure that says if, if my kid doesn't leave high school and go get a degree, he or she is a loser. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. And was I clear on that? Pretty clear. Okay, good. Yeah, more right. of that in, uh, in Borrowed Future. Go check it out. 88-minute documentary. <laughs> BorrowedFuture.com is the place to go. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Open phone lines, 888 Dale is in Pueblo, Colorado. Dale, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Sure. How can we help? Yeah, a couple questions for Ken here real quick. I recently had a bad horseback riding accident and lost both my legs. Mm. Oh, Dale, I'm so sorry. Sorry. That's no, okay. Sorry. Dale, how long ago was that? About two years. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. So I'm trying to find a career. Yeah. I can go to. Yeah. Dale, what were you doing? Uh, 
for work prior managing, to the accident? Managing people. You were leading, um, leading, sure. leading, leading a team of people? Farm and home industry, yeah. Okay. Okay. And have you been on uh, physical disability? Are you on disability right now? Just recently. Just recently got there? Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking this is I want to see what our maybe our moves are here. Uh, what kind of financial shape are you in? Bad. No. Wow. Do what I kind of what kind of debt do you have? A month. What is it? Oh, I, I don't have hardly any debt. I don't have debt is not a problem. It's just a matter I can barely afford to live. Okay. What are your disability payments right now? What are you getting in on a monthly basis? Thirteen hundred. Okay, thirteen hundred. Are you living by yourself? Living with someone? What's your well, What's your call? With, with my fiance, it's causing a little problems there too. So, okay, all right. Um, if the fiance was not in the picture, uh, in your area of Colorado, what would rent cost you? Oh, about nine hundred a month. Okay, so there's hardly any margin there at all. So yeah. we definitely need to get income. Um, are you? I can make, I can make another thirteen hundred. I can make the disability. I'm sorry. I can, since... I can, make, an, I can make an additional thirteen hundred a month on okay. top of my disability, and I have to suffer any loss of insurance or okay, anything like that. All right. So, with the injury being two years ago, are you uh, able to function in and out of society? Just are in a wheelchair? What are you? What are? What's no, your? I, I walk. I walk every day. Oh, you do. I, I still walk every day. I farm every day. I. You'll have horses and stuff that we, I still ride horses. Okay, now wait a second. Three times a week. Okay, so so obviously this is a traumatic injury, but physically you are not limited now. I am limited to weight picking up, but I'm limited to, I can't pick up over 40 pounds. I understand that, but horses. if I heard you correctly, you said that you used to lead people. You were in a management position prior to the accident. Yes. Well, Dale. While I am grieving for you, and this is incredibly traumatic, and I understand your emotion, what's keeping you from getting back? If you're riding horses and walking all over the place and being physically active, what's keeping you from getting back into the workforce and leading people again? You lost your legs. You did not lose the ability to lead. Well, I think there's a lot of things going on. That it's, uh, I know. Society doesn't look at disabilities the way they used to. I understand. Uh and by the way, Dale, I'm not minimizing that. What I'm trying to get you to identify is what's really holding you back. Well, the kidney failure held, held me back, too. I'm on in dialysis now three days a week. Okay. All right. So there, okay. I, I was not aware of that. I didn't catch that. So, yeah. so you're limited um, into how much time you can work because of the dialysis. Yeah, I can rearrange that a little bit if I need to rearrange evenings or weekends or whatever i'm not opposed to that I'm dale have you been seeing uh, here's the deal we only got about a minute and i don't want to rush this but here's the thing i think there's two things you've got to do and i think you need to be doing them consecutively um if you've already seen counseling you need to continue to to get some counseling for the grief and the trauma you've got some relationship issues going on with the fiance you have got to get healthy emotionally and you got to Get with a professional. If you've not done counseling, you've got to do that. Simultaneously, I want you to try to work your dialysis schedule out to where you can work more hours, and I want you to get back in it. There are a lot of people who'd love to give you a second chance because you're a hero. You've overcome an unbelievable, devastating injury, and you haven't forgot how to lead people. And I'm going to suggest to you, Dale, listen, that you loving on people and leading people will do wonders for you getting healthy again. You need greater income to get that spine straighter again and believe in yourself that you can, in fact, recover. You can, in fact, do this.
I'm George Campbell, joined today by Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show, and in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt-free stage, we've got Lashante from Washington, D.C., and I understand you are debt-free? I am. I love to hear it. Uh-oh. I'm so excited. So what area do you live? I live in Maryland. Okay. So, But I'm about 10 minutes from D.C. All okay. right. I'll Very take good. it. Very so good. how much have you paid off? Four hundred, a total of four hundred and seventy thousand. But in the last Whoa. five years, four hundred and five thousand. Wow. Okay. And how long did this take? Four hundred and five thousand has been the last five years. Okay. So we'll call it five years, four oh five. Yes. And what was your range of income during this time? Um, I started uh, at eighty five thousand, and now I'm at one eighty five. Oh, Ooh. I want to hear the story on that. <laughs> Where did that jump in income come from? Um, I am an instructional systems designer, but I'm also a landlord, and I also work part-time. Wow. So talking wow. about working like no one else, My goodness. this one here works like My no one else. My goodness. Woo. Look at you. You got three job titles. That's right. That's incredible. I got about six. Well, I just told you three. You just only told us three. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Very impressive. She's whole lots of fabulous. Ooh. Can I just tell you that right now? This is going to be good. <laughs> I'm very impressed. These numbers yeah. are hurting my brain. So right. what type of debt was this 405000 All real estate. Wow. So I'll just rewind uh, for a second. Okay. I met Dave on the radio in 2007. Okay. So that's when, of course, you do your $1,000 emergency mm -hmm. fund. You look at all your commercial debt, all your student loan debt. That was 65000 and so once I cleared that out, that took me three years. Then I started working on the real estate stuff. And that's been the last five years. Wow. So what kind of real estate is this? Uh, my house. And I also owned a condo that I sold in May. Whoa. Unbelievable. Yes. Wow. So you're totally crazy. You're, you're the house and everything. Everything. Look at you. That's so fantastic. What's, what real estate do you own now? You have your Just primary my house? house? Just the house. Yes. Wow. You are incredible. But I'm looking. You're I'll looking for some you for some investment property. I'm looking now. for something else. Okay. okay. How right. do you have time to look for anything with your six jobs and the three you only told us? <laughs> I want to know how much time you're squeezing out of the 24 hours I have. <laughs> you make time, Ken. You know that. Oh. She you just dropped that on you. time for what matters, wow. right? I, got, I'm not I thought that her. was a pretty good serve over the net, and she just <laughs> smoked right. it right by my ear. <laughs> so, so five years ago, because you've, you've known, known about Dave for a long time now. Five yes. years ago, though, something, something happened. What got you on this journey? So what I was able to do, um, I bought my house during the real estate boom. Hmm. That was in 2005. And so I had a prepayment penalty on my mortgage. And so I wasn't able to refinance or do anything for 10 years, or I was gonna have to pay a penalty of like $15,000. Wow. So in 2016, I was able to get out of my penalty, refinance, I refinanced for 10 years and I killed it in five. Woo, I'm telling you. Get in front of Lashante at your See own what risk. Happens. At your own risk. She will Find absolutely out. motor over you. I love it. <laughs> so what, what were the wow. sacrifices? What did you do? Obviously, you had a lot of side jobs here. Is yes. that what did it for you? What were those sacrifices? So in my home, um, I have a town home. I actually had a contractor come in, and I kind of have this. One of my friends calls it an in-house in-law suite. And so I rent that out to young ladies mm -hmm. um, that move to the Washington, D.C. area. You know, we're a very transient area so always someone coming to go to school always someone coming to get a new job and so my my space that I have um, it's by word of mouth everybody knows that that space is there and so when my tenant moves out people say Lashante is the space available yes it's available and so someone else moves in so that's been a part of my process as well Wow. And during my when I had my condo, I also had a tenant there. So. Wow. So you had some rental income coming in mm -hmm. on top of some of these side jobs. Absolutely. Wow. What was the most lucrative side job for you? It may be the one that I'm doing right now. What's, What's that? Are one? you trying to be secret? I monitor data centers. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You monitor data centers. Yeah. Okay. All right. All so right. like, do you sleep at all? Sometimes. <laughs> I'm sleeping while I'm here in Nashville. How about that? That's good. Wow. That's well, incredible. You have earned it. What would you say is the key to getting out of debt? The gotta wanna. Okay. You gotta wanna sacrifice. <sighs> Sleep. That was good. You gotta wanna Write that sacrifice. Down. I'm, I'm a spell. Gotta wanna. You gotta wanna sacrifice 
energy. You got to want to budget. You got to want to say no to yourself and you got to want to say yes to your future. I love that. Wow. All right, we're going to stay on this theme because you're preaching and you're getting warmed up. All right. <laughs> you're riling up Ken over here. So Dangerous I'm, I'm, I'm going to put the ball on the tee for you here. I love the gotta wanna. Yeah. By the way, if you're keeping score at home, that's G-O-T-T-A, gotta, wanna, W-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. That's fantastic. That's that right. right there will preach. Gotta wanna. Mm -hmm. But here's what I want to know. Yeah. What was the big wanna driving this? What's driving you? What's your big why behind the wanna? There's a couple. Number one, legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I was born to very young parents, mm -hmm. Lewis and Toya Davis. They had me when they were 18. Wow. So the way um, when I was presented with college, mm -hmm. uh, there was no funds for college. So I did have to take out some loans. And so I just wanted to have something for my niece mm. or my nephew or my own children or some children that I impact their lives. And so that will be the legacy mm. that I leave. And also for my mom and dad. Mm. Mm -hmm. How proud of you are they? They're so proud of me. We were supposed to come here in August, but Hurricane Rita oh. kept us away and they yeah. would have been right here. Mm. But I got a second chance because I came to Business Boutique. All right, all right. And so I'm here now. And so, so they'll great. be looking at the replay. I love it. Wow. So did you have any cheerleaders along the way? Yes. Uh, one is right here in the audience. Her name is Johnny's Harris. Is she filming me right now? JLH I'll give her Partners. She is. Yeah. Yes, we met in grad school in 2004 at George Washington University. Mm -hmm. And so we have been neck and neck. She also is a landlord. She also is an IT guru. So we've been able to compare notes. She's also going through her debt-free journey. And it's just a blessing to be able to have friends that are doing what you do. Yeah. Huge. Wow. That's incredible. So can I ask how old you are? Oh, George. Only because I oh. want to inspire so oh. many people out there. Oh, boy. Is it dangerous? Yes. It's not dangerous. Okay. okay. I, I like you to guess first, and then oh, I'll tell George, you. Oh, George, George, George. Here's the thing. I'm Turn not scared George to guess. Mike, hold on. I'm not going to let my colleague step into this mix. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. <laughs> no, George. You never. Step in, George. Step in. 34. Oh. oh, I love you forever. I am 44. Oh. I was close. <laughs> my heart is racing right he here. You so scared. Too. My well, heart is racing. You are an inspiration. Oh. I mean, you're a baby step seven. Yeah. Yes. Nothing's going to stop you. No. A no. lot of people out there have a lot of excuses, mm -hmm. and they got all the butts in the world, but she's got a gotta wanna. She's yeah. got a gotta wanna. I just want to know if part of the gotta wanna was those shoes you're wearing. Always. <laughs> I'm always going into the room right and fabulous. <laughs> even, even without the sparkly heels, she's got enough sparkle in her personality. Oh, I thank mean, you. You are just a joy and have such an amazing personality. You've just made it. my day. Yes, so absolutely. So let's get to this. We've got a copy of the legacy journey for you. You're already living that. You told us that was your big why, and yeah. now you get to live that out. We also have a copy of the Total Money Makeover. Hopefully you can inspire another friend to get on this debt-free journey Excellent. along the way and pay that forward. All right, you ready for this? I am. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. All right, it's Lashante from Washington, D.C. area. $405,000 paid off in five years, making 85 up to 185. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. So, something I used to sing to myself I'm debt free. I'm debt free. No more chains holding me. Once was lost, God set me free. Thank the Lord. I'm debt free. I'm debt free! Touchdown! There it is. She pulled us in with a little singing and then went to the screaming. Wow. Fantastic. What a voice. Yes. Too. That's what Baby Step 7 does for you. I don't think that'll do it for me. I won't sing that great. What an inspiration, Ken. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. More of the Ramsey Show coming up.
You are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, host of The Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by my colleague, Ken Coleman, host of The Ken Coleman Show. Our blinds question of the day is coming up. Find out for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Luna in Kentucky. I'm going to college for accounting, and I have a debt-free full ride. I currently work in a factory to help pay the, to help pay the bills while I'm in school. I find myself hating people the older I get, <laughs> and I'm only 31. Boy, that took a dark turn fast, George. Wow. I didn't see that. I didn't read that ahead of time. That That's probably kinda, for the best. Kind of caught me off guard there. Wow. Only 31 and hating people. I don't mean to sound bitter too late, but people are just aggravating to deal with after a while. I can handle them in small doses, but it's more of a headache than I care to express to anyone out loud. Is accounting a good path for me, or is there a better career for someone like me? Okay. So, Luna, I appreciate the question. I love the raw honesty, Uh, but this is not a career question. This is a uh, emotional, personal health question. And what I mean by that is if you are finding yourself hating people the older you get, we want to get to the bottom of what's causing this not no longer an irritant but an abhorrent disgust for people. That's a you thing. See, you're the common denominator in all these other people. If there's a common denominator around this hate, it's you. Why? I really sincerely I'm not being sarcastic here. I, I think you've got to get uh, some counseling and discover what it is that's irritating you. Um, I think you're using hate a little too freely here. I'm going to go ahead and assume you really don't hate people. But I could see that people irritate you and maybe suck the life out of you. But again, you're the common denominator. I would focus on what it is that seems to irritate you. And you've got to get some tools mental and emotional tools and strategies that a counselor can help you with uh, because there is no career um, that I could suggest that's going to heal this issue. The issue is you and your irritation with people. we got to fix that. Then the rest of it takes care of itself. Yeah. So that's she's, an interesting she's question. going into accounting here, and uh, in accounting, you have to deal with people. Well, you may, I mean, you could say, I mean, I could sit here and brainstorm all I want to. About you can work from things. home and do some yeah, things digitally. Here's some careers where you're not going to be around people as much, but that's not going to solve the issue. That's not going to take care of the problem. Yeah. She needs but I appreciate the healthy, honesty. Some healthy relationships in her life. Because my assumption is people may not being, uh, they don't like being around her. I'm guessing you don't have too too much of a chipper personality if that's the attitude. She's not Mrs. Sunshine, I can tell you that. But, Ooh. you know, again, there's some pain there, and I'm not making light of that. It's just you've got to get, get healthy. Yeah. And back to her question, is accounting a good path for me? Is there a better ca- career path for someone like me? I think accounting could be a great career path, but we've got to deal with this issue. Yeah, I'm not going to answer it. I mean, it's like I, this is not a career path question. It's yeah. like, sure, go do accounting, but if, you, if people hate you so much um, – well, you know, maybe you get that office down in the basement, like the guy in office space with the red stapler. <laughs> yeah. That's a safe place. It's kind of the future for you. That's oh. no fun for anybody. Well, thanks for the question, Luna. We're going to the phone lines now. Jennifer joins us in Portland, Oregon. Jennifer, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. So my issue is we have a 2013 Dodge Journey with over 140,000 miles, and it has a lot of issues, but it's still running. And my husband wants to trade it in for a newer vehicle with less issues. And I don't see the benefit of that because it's still working and running. And I don't want to go further into debt because we're still on baby step two. Okay. What kind of debt are you guys paying off right now? Uh, We have one credit card, a couple of doctor bills, and the biggest thing is his student loans. Mm. How much debt total? Uh, A little over 40, 42 thousand. And what's your household income? Uh, right now it just bumped up to 70,000. Okay. And I'm hoping to start work now that our kids are back in full-time school. Okay. So that will bring the income up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So trading in the car and the issues, that's one thing, but what I would do if I was in your shoes is just start a sinking fund for a car you can pay in cash for. Is he wanting to go into debt for a car? 
Yeah, he wants to get like a $20,000 vehicle, and I just don't see the benefit of that. I mean, yes, it's newer, but we're still getting a used vehicle with possibly more issues. What's his logic of of getting a $20,000 vehicle? I honestly don't know. He thinks that since it'll be newer, there'll be less issues. Mm. So and he's his, sick of the problems well, on the Dodge, and he's gone, man, I don't want to deal with any more issues. If we get an expensive car, there'll be less issues. Yeah. Has he been his on board with you? Fear, his biggest fear is that at 170,000, supposedly, miles, basically is like the time tick. Okay, that's 30,000 miles away. Yeah. So can you not save up for a year or two in a sinking fund and get out of this debt and then get a car with cash? I think we could if we really stuck our nose to the grindstone and did that. But he's not on board. Is he on board with the baby steps in general? Because it sounds like there's some disagreement here. Oh, yes. He's totally on board with it. And we're actually hosting a Financial Peace University class starting next week. Wow. Well, but, okay. So Jennifer, yeah, so, so here, so I think so, once this class starts, he'll he'll realize. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. But here's what I think you've got to do because he's on board. Can I suggest that you cast a little vision? Mm-hmm. So when somebody casts vision, right? They're they're vision casting by definition is about showing a better future, right? This is the future we're headed to. Yeah. And I think he's on board with the baby steps, but the vision he's having a hard time with is we got to have a more dependable car. And he's starting to go, oh, boy, we've got a law of diminishing returns here, so I'm going to try to change up the baby steps and do it my way. What you've got to do mm-hmm. is instead of debating him on that, I think you got to cast a vision to say, hey, before this thing hits the 170,000 mile, like don't try to change the terms with him. Stay in his narrative mm-hmm. and go, I here's a plan – on paper, with my new job, because I'm going to be able to go back full time with that increased income, we can replace this car, like George is saying, while still moving forward mm-hmm. on the baby steps. He's on board with that. I just think you got to show him literally how you get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that would be my okay. approach, because then there's no disagreement. There's no trying to, you know, knock yeah. his logic down. It's just like, okay, I get it. We have 30,000 mm-hmm. miles before you think, man, we've hit the law of diminishing returns on this car. Here's how we cash flow and replace this car and don't go backwards. I think that's the vision. Okay. okay. I can do that. I know you can. Like, I, I can hear, I can hear you got a little juice, don't you? You're like, oh, no, that's a different mm-hmm. ballgame. And so I think that's yeah, what you do. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, now listen. You got to put a little sugar and spice on that, okay? Once you show him the plan, then you got to go. Come on, baby, please, please. Maybe make his favorite dessert. Please do this for me. I'm I'm locked arms with you. My income's going up. We can do this. Mm-hmm. And we can if we just stick our nose to the grindstone. All right. I love it. All we got to do here is make that sinking fund happen because we know that the car is not going to be an emergency when it goes out. We know it's on its way out in a few years, but not tomorrow. No. So start saving up on the side for this. You can. You don't have to stop the debt-free journey. Once you get some income coming in, you can get rid of this debt in a year with your income. If you're living on half of what you make, you can do this thing. That's 42 k the credit card, the medical debt, the student loan. It's not going to be in your life a year from now, and then you can start dreaming about that $20,000 car and save up and pay cash for it. But especially if you're going to lead Financial Peace University, for the love, do not get a car payment while you're leading Financial Peace University. That feels icky, Ken. I don't like that one bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a conflict. <laughs> conflict of interest. You know what's funny, though, George? It's like just because you level up $10,000 or $15,000 doesn't mean that cars are going to have problems. Oh, yeah. Plenty of uh, $20,000 cars with $20,000 uh, type repairs here. It gets very expensive very quickly. Yeah. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to producer Ben Hill, associate producer and phone screener Kelly Daniel, my colleague Ken Coleman, and you, America, for listening in. This has been another hour of The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free scream live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The 
Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, it's The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and money and purpose and calling and career and all of the questions you need answered. I'm George Campbell, joined today by my pal Ken Coleman, and we are taking your calls, and it's a free one, 888-825-5225, 888 888- Five two five. Wait, what? I, I did it wrong, Ken. You just eight, forgot two, a five. two. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. There it is. It happens. It's simple, but it's complex. Yeah. It's burned in my brain. And we are taking your calls, and we're going to open this hour with our friend Scott in Indianapolis, Indiana. Scott, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Uh, thank you. Uh, my wife and I have a not, not necessarily disagreement, but just trying to get uh, guidance on how much for a, a new car is is appropriate to spend. Okay, talk us through this. What's your financial situation? Well, uh, we're debt-free, and we'd be paying with cash. Um, And uh, we generally drive cars into the ground. So I've had mine for 12 years and uh, bought it two years. uh, It was two years old when I bought it and uh, looking at uh, stepping up a bit. But a lot's changed in the world in 12 years since we've bought a car. and So just trying to get a handle on how much to spend. What are you looking at? Well, uh, I'd like to get an Alfa Romeo. Whoa. Uh, hey, now. Which, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty car. Um, now, I currently drive a 5 Series BMW. Okay. Uh, but I got the tax uh, appraisal, and it's worth like 4000 bucks now. And it's like, well, you know, maybe I need a, a, a new car because I've had this one for 12 years. How but, much is the Alfa Romeo you're looking at? I'd be about 90. Oh, okay. All All right. right. And you've got the cash to pay for it. Yes. Where are you guys at in the baby steps? Have you been following that plan? You said you're debt free. Do you have a paid for house? Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, I first heard Dave in 1998. Wow. And I've been following the plan since then. So we have a net worth of about three and a half million. Well, that uh, changes the equation, my friend. Way to go. And what's your income? Currently, uh, yeah, probably about five a year. Five hundred thousand a year. Yeah, yeah. And so your wife is saying ninety thousand because you've never you've lived like no one else. I mean, you're, you're, you're it's unbelievable. So what's the disagreement so what, here, Scott? She Remind just doesn't us. like the price tag, or what? She's saying it's too much. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, our first house was only <laughs> like a, a two hundred, and. Uh, you know, and, and we've been looking at cars, and a lot of the cars don't cost what they cost 12 years ago. And right. Granted, this is a really nice car, but... She's emotionally grappling with the fact that a car could cost $90,000, and you want it. Well, yeah, I, I, I think that's it. Right? What's the and, number uh, that she's okay with? If it's, if 90 is a bit much in her eyes, what's the number she goes, oh, I'm fine with this number? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying, in case she hears this later, I don't want to... Uh, hear it from her, but you know, I spent thirty on the last car, and so she's like, "Well, why not spend thirty-five? And but that doesn't go as far as it used to. No, and uh, as a percentage of our net worth, you know, we're, we're worth like ten x what we were. Yes, we bought that car. Yeah, on right? the, on the Ramsey side, you guys are in in amazing shape, and there's no problem with getting this ninety thousand dollar car. But this is not really a financial question. This is more of a relational question. How do I get my wife on the same page so that I can get the car? Yeah, and I'm not even necessarily trying to, you know, it, it's just, you know, how, how, you know, we didn't grow up with this kind of money, right? So, uh, you know, on one hand, it, it, the intellectual side of it's pretty straightforward because I can do ratios and, and whatnot. Yeah. But, well, well, you've you know, listened to Dave a long time. George, you can refresh him. Let's just play out the, the percentages. Yeah, you've got multi-million dollar net worth, and you're saying, hey, can I spend – a tiny, tiny fraction of that on a car that we're paying cash for and is well under half of our income. In that scenario, it's hard to look at the math and go, wow, this is an outrageous expense. But I get that your wife, she remembers the old days and she's going, man, that's way too much to be spending on a car. But you guys have worked, you've sacrificed, you've lived like no one else. And now is the part where you get to live like no one else. How old are you, Scott? Um, uh, about 50 just yeah. turned 50. It's hard to say out loud. 
I know. I could tell you were like, oh, about 50. Uh, it's like when we're exactly. all, it's all when we're nine, we're like, I'm nine and a half. Thank you very much. Just rounding. Yeah. Rounding you know what? If you said your wife's fine and it's not a getting her on board issue, it's just you wanted to double check your percentages. Well, you got your answer. I'd buy the car. All right. Well, uh, what does she get know. out of the deal? Well, I'm trying to get her a nicer car. <laughs> I'd like to get her a, a, a Land Rover or something, but uh, hers is not as many miles on it as mine. She she drives the kids around, so I don't mind what I drive. But yeah. I figure if we're going to get something new, we should get something good. Well, let Probably her dream a little bit. Car. You guys have done so well. Does she like buying stuff, or is she very still very diligent and frugal and, and says, ah, that's, that's a waste? Yeah, I mean, really the only thing we splurge on is trips. So we like to get the kids out and travel, but we, we just don't spend a lot well, take well, her on a nice trip. Yeah. I mean, have you driven this uh, this Alfa Romeo? Have you taken it out for a spin? Well, uh, I, 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 I will. I haven't yet. <laughs> uh, I'm very weary of car fever, so well, I'm, that's, I'm inoculated against car fever. I get it, and I think you've been very disciplined. I'm actually going to recommend that. You know, why don't you go out and drive a $60,000 car? You know, I understand the, the $90,000 Alfa Romeo and the percentages, and you're there, but, you know, just – Try several things, um, but you don't have anything to be afraid of. Making the kind of money you're making and you're debt free, and the percentages here say it's good. But you know, go drive the thing. You know, um, y- y- they'll let you do it. You got the cash. You can show them. It's right there in the bank. Um, drive a few. Drive a few other amazing things. Get it out of your system a little bit, and then decide what you want to do. But you know, you've done the right things, and now at f- almost fifty. Uh, or you are 50, I can't remember what he said, you know, you, uh, you, you've earned it, and uh, you two got to be on the same page, though. You know what I mean? Like, no, you're th- agreed. Agreed, yeah. And that's the key. I think as long as you do that, um, that's fantastic. Yeah, great question, Scott. Fantastic job. You guys have put yourself in a fantastic I was hoping he had a story position. for us, George. Well, he'll come back. He'll call us back. You know, those cars, by the way, there's a reason they cost what they cost. What is that? High performance. Is that it? I always thought it was great branding and marketing. No, no. Uh, f- for Father's Day about five years ago, Stacy and the kids surprised me, and uh, I got to do seven laps on a road course in a Lamborghini. We're talking a racetrack here. Oh, yeah, a real racetrack. Lamborghini Diablo, okay? There's a difference. I was terrified, and the instructor's in the car with me, so he's like... Look, is it one of those it. fake steering He's wheels? Like, this is going to feel like you're going to flip the car, but it will not flip. You got to trust me. I'm like, I don't trust you, man. I mean, the speed and the power in these cars. How fast did you take it? Uh, honestly, George, I was so focused on the road, I never looked. You never looked down. I listen. Was it's it so exhilarating and terrifying at the same time? Was it 150? Oh yeah, on the straightaways, I got it up to 200. Very impressive. Well, you guys like your cars. I'll give you that. But. Do it with cash, people. Do it the right way. Do not go into debt and do it like Scott did. Completely debt-free. Way to go, Scott. With a multi-million dollar net worth. Half America's going, yawn, Scott, buy the car. Do it, man. (laughs) This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you.
Listening to the Ramsey Show, I'm George Campbell, joined today by Ken Coleman. It's a free call, 888 5225 If you're a parent, you probably know college has gotten crazy expensive. And if you've seen our documentary, Borrowed Future, you know student loans are not the answer. They're a trap, and they've buried millions of people under a mountain of debt. On the other hand, scholarships and financial aid can help pay for college. And if you've got a kid going to college, they need to go after that free money with all they've got. But because there's no way to know if those will come through for you, you need a bigger plan to pay for college. ESAs and 529s are where it is at. These are college savings accounts that you invest money in, and it grows tax-free for college expenses. ESAs and 529s have different rules around age, income, and your investment options, so you'll want to talk to an expert to understand what's right for you. We recommend working with a smart investor pro. They're investing professionals we trust in your area that have a heart of a teacher. That's what you need to look for. You can text the word college to 33789 and we'll help you find a smart investor pro in your area. That way you can help your kids graduate debt free and have a firm foundation for their future. Again, text college to 33789. Let's go to the phone lines this hour. We are joined by Zach in Huntington, West Virginia. Zach, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Hey, how can we help? Uh, yeah, um, I was calling because um, I'm interested in uh, going going to college for some stuff. Uh, I've already got a bachelor's degree, but I have a scholarship for a Master of Arts in uh, Christian Studies. And... Um, Afterwards, I was thinking about uh, pursuing a, a doctorate in in, uh, in divinity, but I'm running into, into some issues. Me and my wife are okay. We're on the same page about the master's degree, but my wife seems to think that um, it, getting a doctorate is kind of it's kind of a waste of money because we want to pay for our kids to go to school too. And so, I was wanting to know: is is that really something that someone should pursue? Should, should I pursue that? If there's not really any financial gain, but I just kind of feel like I want to. What do you mean well, by want to here? Just like, is it a pride thing? It would just feel nice to say, hey, I've got a PhD. I've done something. I've always wanted to get a, a doctorate, yeah. Oh. Um, it, what, but, but it's not just financial gain, but professional gain, right? So yeah. what, what, are, what are you, what are you uh, purposing to do in your career? Uh, I want to teach at a seminary and be a pastor. All right, so it comes down to the two questions I like to put to people. Is it the only way for you to do that? Is it the best way? What's the answer to both of those questions? To be a pastor? No. No, you don't. I wouldn't need that. But really, to teach at any seminary, I would probably need at least a, a, a doctorate of some kind. Of course. To be so, hired on full time. Yeah. Right. So you and your wife are going, okay, we've got our shared goals. And it sounds like to me, you just got to get to a point where you go, we've got some other goals for the kids and we're on the same page there. And so we got to take care of that. And then down the road, I can cash flow the PhD once we take care of some other priorities. Is that what I'm hearing? I think so. Yeah. Well, it just comes down to priorities. You saying not now doesn't mm -hmm. mean no. And it sounds like mm -hmm. she's going, I don't think it's the right move right now. Do you agree with her? Right now. Right now. Yeah, yeah, right now. I, I was thinking, you know, maybe 10 years from now, but it was kind of, I wasn't, she seemed a bit firmer on it, so I wasn't sure whether, it, you know. Well, I mean, it, it, it comes down to whether you agree with her or not, and I think you agree with her. Not now. Down the line, yeah. once we take care of other priorities, yes. Seems like she's probably on board with that as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, we, we need to know so. I mean, this is a conversation to say, hey, and, and again, uh, when cash is in a place where you can do it because you want to, great. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, it, there's a difference between want to and, well, I do want to move from the pastorate and eventually teach on a seminary level. Well, then that's a have to. I've got to do that to get that seminary teaching position, but down the line. So I think it's you all sitting together and going, hey, what are our shared goals the shared vision about our life, including kids, 
and then eventually financially, um, professionally, what are our goals? Let's look at all those buckets together, get on the same page, and then, um, you know, it's not really a no. And I think when you're having the conversation with her right now, I think you feel like you're hearing no. And I think mm-hmm. what you've got to do is change that to not now, not yet. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because here's the deal. No feels final, George. Yeah. Think about it. I mean, in any area of our life, when we hear a no, it feels very final. That door's closed. And and that's what he's feeling. Mm-hmm. But the doctorate is not, seminary is not, an MDiv is not a never. It's not right now. Big difference. Good call there. Jared is in Phoenix, Arizona. Jared, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Great. How can we help? Uh, yes, my mother is gifting us $60,000, and I'm just curious on what you guys' opinion is to what I should or could do with this money. Wow. That's nice of her. Is there any reason behind it, or she just has extra cash and wants to bless you with this? Um, Grandma had passed away in March and left Mom 1.3. Wow. Yeah. That's a blessing there. So, uh, And she's yeah. given you a portion of this? Yes, sir. Out of a kindness of her heart? Yes. Okay, how old are you? Uh, 34. You're 34. Where are you at financially? Do you have any debt? Uh, no, I'm in babysit four, five, and six. Uh, oh, about 200 on the house that we just purchased. Okay, that's great. And so uh, are you, you have a wife? Yes, sir. Have you talked to her about this money? Yes, we have. What's her thoughts on it? Um, no, not the same as mine. Not too sure because we're investing 15%. Uh, we're doing the uh, investing for the kids' college. The house mortgage is less than 25% of our income. It's a $500,000 house. We only owe 200 on it. So it's kind of like, do we just dump it on the house? Do we invest it? Yeah, if, if you don't have any other like, short-term goals, do, yeah. if there's no other short-term goals, like, hey, we need to upgrade the car, or we've got a home repair we've got to do, um, mm-hmm. you're already doing all those mm-hmm. baby steps. I would just let this speed up your baby step six and get this house paid off. Okay. Is that what you guys were thinking, or do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, we were thinking that. We were also thinking about getting rid of our electric bill and going solar, but I don't know about the ROI on that and if it's a good investment or – much about that. Yeah, it's it's going to take a while to ROI on that. So my if if I'm you, I'm not I'm not taking that one. I know you're in you're in Phoenix area and solar's big yeah. there, but it's still very expensive and it'll still take years to recoup that money. I'd rather see you mm-hmm. have a no mortgage and then maybe we can talk about solar. If you're going to stay in that house a while and that's something you guys want to just cash flow for fun, but I want to see this yeah. mortgage gone and I feel like with your sale intensity at 34, you guys are doing really well. Uh, if there's no other short-term goals, I'm going ahead and slap and down that mortgage and, and feeling that progress, Ken. Yeah, there, Jared. I, I love that you're trying to think about saving money and efficiency and all that, but there, it's not apples to apples. Paying off that house is going to yield so much more financial gain for you than than uh, turning your entire house into a solar panel. You know, I mean, it's a good thing, but there's ways to save yeah. money. Uh, it's not even close. So don't get distracted. And again, nothing wrong yeah. with this, but that's a distraction. Yeah. You know, like, well, what okay. if I did this and I did the solar panel? No, knock the house out. Way, way better play. Yeah, that's incredible, okay. Jared. Well, uh, we're yeah, rooting for you. Call you. us back when that house is paid off. You guys are crushing it, man. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, thank you. We'll do. I love it. That's what I love to see, Ken, because I'm, I'm on that journey. I'm a, a little younger than Jared, but we have a big goal to pay off this house. And the way that it's going to set up Jared and his family yeah. to be you know, in his 30s with a paid-for house. It's crazy. No payments. They're going to be able to do whatever they want. Yeah, yeah, it's They're really phenomenal. It's a game changer. And you think about the amount of money that you're saving. Um, there are other ways to like, you know, all right, let's get the house more efficient and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, That's what I love about the baby steps. It clearly yeah. says, here's what to do next with my money. What is my next goal that makes sense for my long-term yeah. financial future? Yeah. When you can filter it through that framework, it just lets, thing be, it lets things be a lot more clear. And where there's clarity, there is freedom. Yes. I love it. We've got more of the show coming up. Give us a call, 888-825-5225. I'm George Camel. He's Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show.
Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by Ken Coleman, host of the aptly named Ken Coleman Show. Yeah, we spent hours and hours. The creative meetings must have been exhilarating. Lots of dollars to come up with that. I love it. We're taking your calls. The number is 888-825-5225. And Elizabeth joins us in the Washington, D.C. area. Elizabeth, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? We are doing fantastic. We're happy to talk to you. How can we help? Awesome. Yeah. So my husband and I, we are currently finishing up baby. Well, we're on baby steps four, five and six. And we currently live in D.C. We're renting an apartment now. How? I think we lost you there. We have a 15 year mortgage on that. So I repeat that. And, I heard it up until you have an oh. apartment in D.C. Yes. So we also have a home that we own in D.C. Or in Atlanta with a 15 year mortgage. Okay. And so we had we had tenants who have decided they don't want to renew um, moving forward. And so now we're debating on what our next step should be. So initially, we were thinking our first option was to just search for another tenant, have them sign a 12-month lease, and then use the extra money to just go gazelle and tents and pay off the Atlanta home within three years. And the second option is to sell the house that we have in Atlanta and purchase a home in D.C. with the money from the sale of the Atlanta house. Now, the caveat with that, though, is that we're not sure if we actually want to be in D.C. within three years. Once we start considering a family, we might want to move back to North Carolina. So Interesting. that is where we're at. So you're not <laughs> sure about planting roots in D.C. quite yet. It could be, you said, about three years? Yeah, in about three years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm 29. My husband is 33. And we're thinking that when we start to, you know, talk about children and stuff like that, we'll want to be closer to our family. So, Which is in Atlanta. Um, D.C. is just really expensive. No, in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, so you'd be moving completely to North Carolina if you made this move. Yeah. So either yeah, way, exactly. you will have no roots in Atlanta anymore. Exactly. Tell yeah. me why you wouldn't sell the home in Atlanta. Let's come at it from that. I'm Because you called us. You want to know our thoughts. But I want to know what you were thinking. And primarily, I want to know why you would not sell it right now in Atlanta. Yeah, so our thing is, like, it's so like a newer home. Um, we purchased it in 2018. And so, like, there's not really much that really goes wrong with the house at this point. So at this point, like, having tenants in and having them pay is, like, you know, it's just extra money. And then we were thinking another alternative to that is even, like, possibly doing Airbnb and then just having a place to stay whenever we go visit. So okay, couple things. Couple things. I'm uh -huh. going to jump in real quick. Okay, uh, how yeah. much is the house worth if you were to sell it? Uh, it would sell at two sixty nine right now. What do you owe on it? One sixty. Okay, and you said something at this point. I think you said at this point twice. Yeah, right now it's new, and at this point there's not a whole lot of upkeep. Well, before you know it, you're starting to have to deal with something, and you're a long way away. Um, I know the Atlanta right. area pretty well. Um, I just don't, I, you know, at this point, uh, the market's as hot, hot, hot as it can be. Uh, if you were to sell mm -hmm. this house right now, you pay it off and then you have some money that you guys can then invest while you're trying to figure out what the next three, four years is going to look like. You're not moving to Atlanta. doesn't sound like to me. It sounds like North Carolina is in the future. I, I just don't know why you wouldn't sell it. Um, it, it to me, okay. you you fast forward your financial goals so much by selling it and pocketing the profit on it, as opposed to keeping it right. going and making a little bit per month. Right, that's true. Okay, that's 
exactly what I needed to hear. That was just kind of a cash out, <laughs> baby. Because we were we were at that, so I appreciate that. And then when it comes to purchasing a home in DC, like, do you think we should? You said it, just invest it up until we get to that point, or how much would you be able to put down on a home in DC after we sell this place in Atlanta? Yeah, so we were thinking just like eighty thousand. Like the average house um, here is going around like four hundred thousand for a new build. So right. we would just put the eighty thousand. Just to um, me, to me, that. I'd sit tight. I, I feel like you guys, because I just. It doesn't sound like to me you're a firm on when we're going to North Carolina. You could change your mind six months right. from now, sounds like to me. Yeah. So I wouldn't buy a place in D.C., George, yeah, would do you, you? Do you have a lease right now in D.C.? Yeah, we just renewed for another year here. Okay. What I would so, do is I'd sell that mm-hmm. house. I'd park it in a high-yield savings account for now to keep it liquid in case, like Ken said, you change your mind in six months or a year after this lease is over and you decide, hey, we need this money you know, for a down payment for wherever we go. So I would keep it liquid. And then okay. if you decide, hey, we're playing our roots in D.C., you can take that money out yeah. and it will have grown by a little bit. It sounds like you'd probably have – close to six figures in savings sitting there, which is totally fine if that's for short-term goals. Okay, got it. Yeah. Awesome, well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff there, Ken. Well, you know, you got a lot of nuances. Yeah, and well, but this is a young couple, and I think this is the key. They're figuring out as we speak, they're literally going, to, well, we don't ever going to stay in D.C. another two years, three years. Uh, do we start the family? Then we move back to North Carolina. And I got to just tell you, you know, I've been on that side. You know, just because we want to try to start to have a family doesn't mean we just wish it to happen. Yeah. So I think as a young couple, staying as flexible as possible is what I would recommend. Flexibility is king for a young couple because they're... They're still figuring it out, you yeah. know? And so um, th- I think, though, that there's this pressure to, oh, we got to own a place or we're wasting our money. No, you aren't. And getting out from underneath that place in Atlanta and making a profit, I mean, they're already sitting on just the 80000 from the house. They're yeah. right at a 20% down payment on something in the 400s. Flexibility is the name of the game if you're a young couple with no kids. Good word. Let's go to Hunter in Hartford, Connecticut. Hunter, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how's it going? Great. How can Ken and I help? Uh, so I've been following the baby steps for quite a while. Uh, I was pretty dumb when I was young, and I ended up racking up about $90,000 in debt between credit card and a car. Uh, so for about nine months, I didn't go out and do anything, saved as much as possible to pay it off. So... Paid off my credit card, paid off a lot of my car, and due to a kind of fluke investment, I now have seventeen grand, and I owe about twenty four on my car. So I'm trying to think if I should just, aside from the thousand dollar savings, put it towards my car. So three months from now, my car is paid off, but in six months I'm going to be moving. So I don't know if I should keep that money for eventually when I move. How much is this move going to cost you? Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm getting out of the military and moving. Uh, I'm not too sure where yet. And so that's where it's kind of, I don't know. Well, I don't think it's going to be a a $17,000 move. So maybe you just set aside that $1,000 as a moving fund because you know that's coming up regardless. And you slap 16 Mm -hmm. on this car, leaving you with eight left. Yeah. And then you're going to get rid of that within a few months. Yeah, because I have about, right now I'm making about $6,000 a month, and my operating cost is just above 2000 so I'm putting most of it into paying stuff off. Heck yeah. And, and let's, Hunter, you got plenty of time to save up for a move. Once you get an idea where you're going, you get a quote, and, and let's say you have a three-month lead time, even in just your normal three months of operating expenses, you've got enough to be able to fund the move. Yeah, I think you can pay this car off and then still save up for that move I think so within too. six months. I absolutely think so. Is that possible, Hunter? Oh, that's 100% possible. Yeah, I've been, I negotiated for some cheap rent, uh, sold my old car to get a cheaper one, but I had a bunch of rollover costs because I was a 21-year-old that didn't know anything about money. Well, you're a beast now, young man. By the way, thank you for your service to our country. You're a great American. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for the call, Hunter. That's awesome. You hear that, Ken? I was 21. I did some dumb stuff. You've been there. I've been there. Yeah. But he decided at some point, he said, I'm not going to live like this anymore. 
there's a better way. 90000 in the hole, and I, if I'm doing some quick math, which you know is dangerous, he's paid off about sixty-eight, seventy grand worth of debt in nine months, somewhere in that range. He's a rock star. Unbelievable. While serving our country. Yeah. I'll take that. Wow. So much good stuff here, folks. Keep calling us. 888-825-5225 is the number. I'm George Campbell. That's Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. day comes from Psalm 1611. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forever. Colin Powell once said, there are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Sad news of his passing this morning. Yeah, true great American hero. Um, pretty crazy, you know. It's like you, you you don't hear about public figures for a while, and um, I think I had forgotten or I never knew that he was suffering from cancer. And then you hear the news today, and it's like there's a when you talk about somebody like him, you, you're talking about you know I was a high schooler, um, you know Desert Storm, and then you go through the the different administrations, the first African American Secretary of State, so certainly a historical figure uh, in American history, and. Uh, Sad, sad, sad to see him uh, pass. Uh, it's hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah, crazy stuff. All right, let's go to the phone lines. They're open right now, and we've got Kyle in Chicago, Illinois. Kyle, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. Glad to be talking to you, gentlemen. You as well. <clears throat> so I would like to bless my wife with a surprise vacation. All right. And we have really close friends who happen to be our neighbors and the husband and I talked and we would like to send our wives together as a surprise. So the question is a moral one because from what he shared and from other conversations that we've had about finances, uh, they're having a hard time to, to put it mildly. And so what I don't, what I'm concerned about is encouraging a poor financial decision in order to bless our wives together. And so what I want to do is negotiate those boundaries without being up in their business, but also not, uh, asking, asking him to, uh, put themselves in a tougher spot, given that the holidays are coming up. They've mentioned that they may even need to purchase a vehicle here pretty soon. Um, but there's no cash in the bank, unfortunately, for them. So you are cash flowing this vacation for your wife, but you're saying, hey, if she goes with her, her friend, she's going to have to put that all on a credit card and come back home with a bunch of debt. Precisely. That's correct. Mm. Well, can I ask why this came up? Uh, was this something that you guys are very, very close with them? And so you guys start talking about doing this for your wives. That's really cool. You guys are standing around the trash can or something in the driveway. And then by the time you guys cook this idea up, uh, then he tells you later that their financial uh, situation is, is pretty bad. Is that what happened? Not exactly. Uh, the, my understanding of their financial situation had been – uh, somewhat progressive in nature, but it kind of became clear when uh, when he described how they would pay, for, how he would pay for it. All right. Uh, so what's so? Why don't you just send your wife on the thing, and uh, uh, or you're saying you wanted her to go with this girlfriend? That's the whole point of this. Uh, yeah, for 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 the moms to get away from the kids. Our oldest son is seven, and he's. Uh, He's one of four, and they have a lot of kids that are all little as well. So they, because they're basically best friends, we thought it would be uh, nice for the both of them to do it together. How much more would it cost to uh, pick up her portion? Uh, 
for both of them together, it'd be three grand. So right about fifteen hundred bucks. Can you do that, or would that stretch you? Uh. I believe we can. It would be tight. We would not need to dip into our emergency fund. It would not compromise our savings for Christmas either. It would be tight, but it can be done. We could cash flow it. All right. Well, I'm not telling you to do that. I, I'm just digging here because at some point we got to be grown ups, and you got to go. Hey, and man, if this was your idea, and it was saying, your hey, idea. Hey, come along, come along, come along, yeah. and they go, okay, we can do it, but we'll have to put on a card. I understand how that could feel. You're going to feel the weight. It's more about how you're going to feel yeah. uh, than how, what position they're going to be in. And I think yeah, it's a cool sure. idea to cash flow it. If you guys are that close and you want to bless them with this gift, um, that's an awesome thing. But, but I also I, think you have I'm, an honest yeah. conversation with the buddy. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not suggesting, Kyle, that you make your personal budget tight to do this. It's just you, I was trying to show you. You got two options. I think you called us to basically say, "What should I do?" Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you either you either bless them and you make a bit of a sacrifice in order to bless them or you sit down with them and go hey dude listen i am not trying to talk you into living the way we live happy to answer questions about the way we live why we do this with our money because i think it can help you and i really would like to help you but i don't want to cross the boundary our friendship to you guys matters don't want to infringe you know because then we keep it as healthy as possible there but hey i don't think this is a good idea for you guys and i kind of feel bad about it like i just don't think this is a good idea what are your thoughts like you got to have a grown up conversation Conversation here. How do you think he would respond to that kind of conversation? Uh, I think he would be kind and cordial on the front end, but I, I, I'm not convinced that there's humility there to uh, get that close in terms of uh, perhaps it being an opportunity to reconsider some uh, things. I feel like you send her on the solo vacation and you get out of the, the moral dilemma here. I think so, too. Yeah. Would that she not have option. as much fun with that, just being on her own? She might. Uh, she she definitely needs her alone time too. That that is definitely an option. Or you tweak the vacation to be a lot, uh, you know, less expensive, and you go, okay, we can do a long weekend in a nearby city and do some fun things. That's a thought too. Yeah. See, Kyle, here's the deal. Based on your response, which by the way, if you ever decide to run for Congress, that was a wonderful <laughs> answer. The way you kind of you kind of moved around that direct question. Um, I, I, this is not your problem. I understand your heart for your neighbors and your close friends. I understand it. You had a wonderful, you got a wonderful heart. It's not your problem. Like all of a sudden this has turned into, I want to bless my wife because she needs some time away to, Oh, what do I do about my neighbors? It's not, that's the wrong question. It's like, what do you want to do for your wife? Do that for your wife. It's not your responsibility. And by the way, if he, if you were to say all the things that you said, and, and I love the roundabout, you're a very nice man. He was like, well, I don't know if he has, he has look, he's going to get offended. So now you're in a sitch, a situation where we've talked about this idea and there's not much you can do about it. He's going to do what he wants to do. And, uh, I, there's just no easy fix here, man. This isn't your problem. Um, there's gotta be some hard conversations and hard decisions, but I don't like the idea of putting them in debt. Right. But I mean, it, you don't have a moral dilemma. You've done nothing wrong here. You, you came up with a nice idea to bless your wife and her, for her girlfriend. Well, you didn't know what their financial situation was. So, um, I don't know. Well, one I'd the, send my wife away. That's what I would do. <laughs> Stacy Coleman deserves a vacation. Uh, yeah, if Mama needs some time away, I'm and I got the cash. I want to take care of Mama. I, I'd love for her to have a friend with her. But at the end of the day, what matters most? And I love the idea of her going on the solo vacation. He goes, "Hey, well, you guys did that with cash. How'd you do that? Oh, we had margin in the budget because we follow this plan. And maybe he sees that and goes, "Hey, I, I'd like to learn a little more." And you do it on his terms, and you're not shoving the plan down his throat. And next year. They're debt free, and they go, "Hey, let's do a vacation together, cash." That'd feel a lot better to me. Yeah, and you but get your again, buddy on the same page. All those conversations are well and good until somebody just has a stiff neck about it and goes, "Well, you're weird," and all that kind of stuff. So now you're going, "Okay, what do I want the relationship to be like? You know, how's this going to mean?" This is something that you just got to be a big boy and and kind of walk through this and not make your decisions based on, you know, what they're doing and how they're living. Yeah. Maybe not the joint vacation idea after all. No. Well, Ken, as we wrap this hour, uh, we got a lot of questions around career and purpose around here, and I want to let people know that they can actually call into your show every single day. How yeah. do they do that? Where can they find the show? 
844-747-2577, The Ken Coleman Show. If they can't remember that, KenColeman.com. The phone number's there. We're live from 12 to 2 Eastern Standard Time, uh, just uh, steps away in Studio B. And, and you can come watch uh, it live. You can come watch it live. We had a that. great crowd watching live today. It's always fun. And uh, if you just want a bigger shovel or you're trying to answer the question, what am I supposed to do with my life? Can I make income? and an impact. The answer is yes. That's what we do, and that's why we do it. So we'd love to hear from you. I love it. Well, hey, two shows in a row, Ken. That's a win in my book. It's been a a blast hosting with you. I want to thank our producer, Ben Hill, our associate producer and phone screener, Kelly Daniel. I want to thank you, America, for listening in to some life-changing content here on The Ramsey Show. We'll be back with you before you know it. Until then, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. This has been The Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts.